if I want to have this conversation again, I want to have rough notes to, to do this. But anyway, so the exegesis and the hermeneutics, you have to be totally willing to say, God, show me your truth. Even if it goes against what I believe in my church, what my church believes, what I think I believe, be totally willing to go against that. Not that you want to. You don't want to be of a divisive spirit. The Holy Spirit told me, uh, just spoke right to my heart one time, not long ago. He said, don't be of a divisive spirit. And at first I was like, who? What? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I got to thinking about it. And, and you know how God gives you instant understanding that, that that would take a long time to explain. He gives it to you in a second, right? And and he showed me that to just wherever there's a little tweak along the way, like the kingdom of God understanding that it, the parable of the seed sower is the shining example. The Lord's prayer, a shining example. Uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. But the seed sower all the things contained in the seed sower pertain to the kingdom of God. And guess what? They pertain to this life. And so do many of the other parables that talk about the kingdom of heaven is like unto. And okay, that's just one, that's one example that we have not as a ministry taught the kingdom of God properly. And I was willing to change. I'm not willing to buck the system. I'm not willing to walk up to a pastor and say they're wrong. That's not being, I don't want to be of a divisive spirit. But I didn't understand it for a long time. Why should I fault anyone else that doesn't understand it? Right? Amen. So all, what do we do? We come together as brothers and we look at the scripture and we just share non-confrontationally, full of love. We all are on the same side and we all we're, we're looking at the same Bible and, and, and we just say, you know what? This is why I, I, I changed my my thoughts on this, because I saw this scripture, this scripture and, and, and down the line. And then everyone has a chance to look at it without confrontation, without uh, decision. D uh, d decisive. What's the word? Divisiveness. Divisive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God has a way of humbling us. And, and so we, we just have to be willing. God, point me. If I'm wrong, show me. If I'm right, show me. And whatever, wherever the chips fall down, as far as this, the, the analogy goes, let God be God. Let the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And if it goes against me, or goes against my tradition, or goes against even my organization, then you got some praying to do. But so, we didn't come to the understanding of the kingdom of God until we started understanding the Old Testament better. Amen. And that goes right to the point. Um, for example, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. For this promise is unto you. Well, once you start studying that, you realize he's talking about the covenant promise that was prophesied in Joel. Peter even says this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. But when you start realizing in the Old Testament that it's not just in Joel, it's in Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, it's plastered throughout Psalms. This whole, even in Deuteronomy, about the whole part of how God will someday bring a new covenant that would make the first old. And that would be the covenant that he would put his spirit in all flesh, because that was, as we know, was only given to the prophets, and the, and the law and the prophets were under John. So that was a whole brand new thing that God would pour out his spirit and actually put it in, in mankind. That blows away the Islamic faith that, that says God's too holy to have anything to do with uh, um, that, you know? I'm going to bring in uh, Alex here real quick while we're... <clears throat> So be willing to, to change where change is needed. And uh, communion was another example. Um, we were talking about that a few weeks ago, where we've come to find out that we're not teaching communion to the fullest. 
that, that we should be teaching it. The early church practiced the, the Lord's Supper communion every day. You know, why did they do that? And and then there's so there's lots of things that we're not doing as best as we could. Right. And then here, here's another example of being able to look back. Brother Alex, God bless you, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. We're all recording this program so to help us make notes for further teaching. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute mine. Okay. Thanks, brother. So uh, when it comes to any topic, when, when you do the exegesis, you find that if you come into critical study of the Old Testament or New Testament or any, any study of any script, if you come with a preconceived idea or you come with looking for scriptures that are about to back up your point, you'll find it. And that's deceiving. And it, it, it's very critical for us, if we want to walk in truth, if we want to walk in spirit, for the Father seek as such, to worship him in spirit and in truth. If we want to walk in the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of truth, then be willing to be corrected. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, right? I mean, that's all core stuff. But here's an example. And we've talked about this before. Uh, going into the scriptures with preconceived ideas and how easily it can slay you and deceive you. Is if you, for example, thought that you had to speak with tongues to be saved. That was the only evidence of the Holy Ghost. Or the first evidence of the Holy Ghost. Then every scripture that you find in the Old Testament through the, through the New Testament is either going to tend to back that up or you're going to not accept some part because you're afraid to go against it. So an exegesis is something that we do without calling it that, okay? That's just a term that's given to that critical study. Um, now then hermeneutics is applying the context of what was learned long ago to my life today. That's hermeneutics. So we have the understanding, the critical understanding of what was written, why it was written, all the context of it, and then we talk about how it applies to me today. So um, that that's the whole ball game that I think one of the things, one of the things that advancing education is called by God to do is establish sound doctrine and not reinforce our church traditions, but establish firm, sound, sure foundations. And I think that's our call. And, and that's challenging. Brother Mack can share with you uh, how many times we've had to say, well, wait a minute. That didn't say that. And, and we would catch ourselves saying common slogans, common phrases, religious phrases that we kick around all the time. You ever mix two scripture verses together? I do it all the time. And then when you then you check yourself and you say, uh, well, wait a minute. Romans never said that as many as been baptized into Christ to put on Christ. That's Galatians. So you can't use the words put on when you're studying the detail of Romans chapter 6. But you can associate it in, a, in, in collateral workings to get a, a greater understanding of the whole picture. But why is it that Paul said to the Galatians put on, and why did he tell the Romans you're baptized into? Because the Romans, he talked to those that understood the law. And he said, I speak to those that understand the law. 
But in the Galatians, he's talking to Gentiles. It made more sense to them to say you put on Christ. So he said to the Romans, you're baptized into Christ, the very one that the circumcision said was not the Messiah. <laughs> and so it I, I, I don't know how many hours that Brother Matt has put in, but I'm, I think I can be conservative and say that we put about at least 100 hours into this effort a very serious, detailed study and prayer. Man. And because if, if, if I am going to stake my soul's eternity on something to be right or wrong, I need to know. It's that important. Now, if you're coming to church for the camaraderie, for the social event, yeah, you can sprinkle in some spirit too, you know, then uh, go to any church. <laughs> but if you really want to, to walk in the spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost, yeah, now you're talking about truth, because that is the spirit of truth. It is the Holy Ghost. It's the new covenant that made the first one old, that God would pour out his spirit and put his spirit in the inward parts. Take a stone, a hearty, a heart of stone, and make it into a heart of flesh. Baptism with fire, conviction. Baptism with the Holy Ghost, the the inner connection. Man, that's beautiful stuff. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> so I would not expect anyone else, even in this ministry, and I don't mean it divisively. I mean it lovingly. To fully just, yep, I wouldn't want them to. I wouldn't want them to trust me, trust my years of experience, or, or trust my position, or whatever the case may be. I don't want them to trust me for that. I want them to start and study it themselves. To me, that's part of the, the pitfalls. I think people looked at the righteousness of the Pharisees. And Christ had to, I think he had a little bit of a time trying to tell his disciples, well, beware of the leaven. You know, beware of the traditions. And, and it, it, you know how strong it was? They didn't even see how strong it was. It was so strong that even Barnabas got carried away by the assimilation of separating from the Gentiles, the Jews separating from the Gentiles. That's how strong and inbred it was within them. And they ferreted it out. They they dug through the mess and came down to the bedrock of truth. And that didn't that didn't come overnight, and it didn't come without pain. But it did bear fruit. It did bear fruit. That's something um, <clears throat> that Pastor Brand and I we actually had a we've had some three plus hour Skype conversations over the past uh, couple of weeks. And we actually had one last night that I don't think it was quite that long, but it was pretty long. Um, and, and that was one of the things that came up was, was the disciples having to root, needing to root through all of the tradition to, to lay it aside. And when they finally had the understanding, then they were able to move forward. Um, and, and all the things that we've been digging through, we're needing, we're doing the same thing, but it's not just traditions that might be in, in our church. It's the traditions of the world. We're, we're, we're looking at something on a worldwide scale, because when you look at, if, if you just look at history, um, when, uh, when we were working on the statement of faith, um, I looked at I looked at our old statement of faith, and then I thought, well, what do other churches look like, and what does the UPC look like? And I saw I saw not a total mirror image, but I, I saw all the similarities between UPC and our church, and and of course that makes sense. Our founding pastor was mm -hmm. he came from United Pentecostal, so it would make sense that there would be um, things that are similar. And then I thought, well, where did it? Where did that come from? Just keep taking it. You know, 
you're talking about the exegesis. This this is part of it, just taking it, stepping it all the way back. So where did the UPC come from? Where did all the ministries come from? They all branched out of the Catholic Church. Because if we look at history, we see the first the first um, offshoot was the Lutheran, you know, Luther. And and nailing the, the I don't know what they called it, but nailing that... It, you consider the heresy that and how how radical that was to nail that document to the door of the church, <laughs> um, and and then you look so you look at the Catholic Church. Well, when did that start? It started shortly after Christ, um, and and traditions crept in, and uh, so so yeah, it's 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 looking back, and then from there going all the way back to the Old Testament. So it's it's something that, that we've realized that as as you mentioned, Pastor, that it's it's been challenging and 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 even even some fundamental things we we've had some studies on because we want to be able to we're talking about tongues and 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 how that the uh Pentecostals, the apostolics tend to believe that you have to speak in tongues to be saved well in order for us to be able to address that we have to be able to show it through scripture and not in our preconception of what we think the scripture says because one thing we discovered is um we're both looking at the same scriptures trying to prove our particular point of view and there there's there's a lot of commonality there's 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 there and i was thinking about this today pastor brand there's there's equal truth and error on both sides um so so how how do you fare through all that stuff all those traditions all those ideals uh it it has to be through looking at the old testament all exactly. the prophecies, seeing how they were filled, seeing what it meant to be. I was looking at this today, the differences between pouring on and filling. And, and I, I did a, a word search for spirit of. And that was an interesting, uh, that was an interesting search. Um, and we know that there's one spirit, but you hear like the uh, spirit of adoption, the spirit of truth, the spirit of error. Um, Obviously, spirit of error is 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 man or or the devil, but spirit of adoption, spirit of 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 God, spirit of truth, um, all the things that would be God. You know, you can you can. What is it we talked about? The different administrations of the spirit, but the same spirit. Yeah. And um, so I I I, uh, I know within in my mind that there there is a rock solid foolproof way to show uh salvation doesn't require uh uh doesn't require speaking in tongues and we, and we we had a discussion last night about that and and found some really intriguing things um but i i, I was thinking this today pastor that i think it can go even deeper oh I, I think know. i think there's a way to make it bulletproof um, beyond what we are currently saying, um, but it's going to it's going to require continued digging. Yep. When you look at, I think where we in the the honest analysis was those that say you must speak with tongues to be saved be, is because they say that that proves that you have to have the Holy Spirit within you and you can't be saved without it. And then they used the old, so the the Old Testament prophecies. And talk about God pouring his spirit. They say that that is the speaking in tongues. But the truth of the Old Testament prophecies, when you look at the way that all those scriptures were applied in the New Testament, the speaking in tongues and, and that Holy Spirit was part of that prophecy, but not all of it. They look at it respect, retrospectfully. And they seem, it seems, 
that they look at that as holy. 100% that is that covenant. But when you look at the administration of God's spirit, that's just part of it. There are many evidences of the Holy Ghost moving in somebody's life. And you can't even repent until you believe and you can't believe unless you had the the paracletos ministering to you to 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 trigger your heart into repentance to make it an answer of a good conscience towards god so you got to see that whole picture as being the fulfillment of god pouring out his spirit seeking out men uh because he wants to be our god and he wants us to be his people and that all would know him from the least to the greatest, so that all would be without excuse. And uh, and we will make it even more and more and more bulletproof. And we're going to come up with Bible studies that will they'll be deep, they'll be extensive. You won't do it in ten minutes. You won't do it in a half hour. It'll be go line upon line, precept upon precept, build upon build. And but. I am very encouraged. And I got to tell you, I was a little skittish at first because I said, okay, God, wherever the chips fall, <laughs> wherever they land, I'm willing to stand on them. And I, I look back at the ministry when we first used to teach that. You had to speak with tongues to be saved in the very beginning parts. and and. Pastor Davis, God gave him a revelation, probably much like what we're doing right now. And I don't know to what depths God gave him that revelation. Maybe it was, you know, sometimes you just have an, an unction where you know something's right, but you can't prove it. Or you don't have enough knowledge to prove it or, or enough scripture. Now we have an arm in the ministry called advancing education. Where we can dig it. I dig it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and uh, I'll let, I say, let the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Amen. Yes. And I'm thankful to say that, let, let me just close the whole loop and then I'll, I'll, I'll get off the box here. Uh, when you prove that baptism Water baptism goes to putting on, receiving, knowing Christ in his death, his burial, and most importantly, his resurrection. When you put on the resurrection of Jesus Christ in water baptism, it is evident abundantly through scripture that that requires the holy spirit to resurrect and you look at the context remember how we used to always say read john chapters 13 through 17 with an understanding of the kingdom and and, and how that all works you need to read romans chapters 5 through the end of 8 and read it because it's all one thought it's all one particular context. And all of that in there, it assimilates the Holy Spirit. That same Spirit that rose up Christ dwells within you. It'll quicken your mortal bodies. And it talks about how that Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit, the likeness of his resurrection gets applied to your life in the operation of God based upon your doings in obedience. In water baptism. So that w w months ago, when I was starting this process, I said, God, I need something. I need to see this clearly. At what point does a person go from not having the spirit to having the spirit? And what is that crossover point? And and I'm so grateful to God for his word that it's very clear and very evident. We are complete in Jesus Christ. We are complete 
when we put him on and faith now now this is important it's it's got to have your faith in operation the faith of god that he is the son he is the messiah he is the mediator of your sins and you get baptized in his name you know that you are putting on the messiah the remission of your sins the atonement you don't have to understand the depths of godhead you don't have to understand the depths of much of anything except that you're a sinner and you need to be saved and that Jesus Christ is your salvation. That's enough. That's enough. And you receive that spirit because if you do it because of an answer of a good conscience towards God, there's a spiritual interaction going on here because it takes a spiritual interaction to believe and to have faith. And it takes a spiritual interaction to repent and a spiritual interaction to obey the scriptures. You're complete in Christ. So to, to, to have anyone say, you must be born again and again, you must be, yeah, okay, you're baptized in Jesus' name and you have remission of sins and you put on the resurrection, but you still don't have the Holy Spirit in you? Now, it, now it's ludicrous when you look at the Scripture for what it really says. But if you don't know the Scripture, you can look with that preconceived idea and try to look backwards, and, and you can confuse yourself real, really deep because you, you can get misunderstood real easy, and that's why you've got to fare it out, and you got to start from the beginning and build it up to the truth of what's only in the Scripture. There's a, um, there's a gentleman here. He, um, he, I will call him a brother because he is. He's baptized in Jesus' name. He believes in baptism. He is apostolic, so he believes, you know, in the in the tongues aspect of it. Um, but I think this is this goes back to what you were saying, Pastor. As far as um, it's just the 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 subtlety, um, and I don't like and and I you said this the other night. I don't like giving S Satan credit. But we have to understand how he works, and yeah, not ignorant. and 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 he he's used subtlety in twisting the scriptures since day one. Since he, he deceived Eve and Adam, he's been doing he's been using subtlety. He tried to use it on Jesus on the mountaintop, um, and and I think this is this is probably one of the biggest ones. Just, just the, the twisting of the importance uh, in nature of the divinity of God. And should that be a surprise to anyone that Satan would do that? Yeah. So we have to, we really have to work through all this and figure it out. And 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 you know, it's I I I'm not shying away from the questions I'm getting. And the conversations I'm having having with this gentleman, and they're and they're not divisive, they're 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 um, they're peaceful conversations, and I have to and I have to realize that, you know, getting confrontational doesn't solve, doesn't come to a solution. No, it doesn't work the righteousness of God. And uh, and this gentleman, he's he's open. Pastor Brandon, uh, the three of us are going to sit down on Skype. You know, hopefully soon, um, and and uh, he's uh, he's more in line with um, he he's like halfway there. <laughs> I think he he realizes that it, he doesn't necessarily believe full out in in everything the UPC says because he's he's broken away from from them as well. Very similar to what Pastor Davis did. Mm -hmm. So um, I definitely, I can definitely see that, that there's, the truth is going to be revealed in its fullness in these conversations. And it may not happen in one call. It might be several. Oh, it took us several meetings. We've, we've been, we've been going over this for months. Mm -hmm. um, 
and and it's and it's been each meeting has been big pieces, big rocks. Um, if we're going to be the largest Jesus name ministry, then we have to, because we're not being the largest Jesus name ministry right now with everything the way we're doing it. If we're going to grow to that kind of a measure of accountability and responsibility in Christ, it's going to have to be administrated differently. And I'm not talking about organization, pastorship, leadership. I'm talking about biblical, at the grassroot level, each Christian has to up their spiritual game. Each person has to, to rise up in Christ and take the next couple notches up higher as they heat up in Christ. We're either heating up or we're cooling down. We're either lukewarm and getting spewed out. You know how it takes a lot of hot water to make lukewarm. You can't look at your lukewarm. You can't look at your hot and say, well, I'm hot. It's going to require us all to understand the kingdom, to understand the Holy Spirit and how it pricks our heart, to understand the Godhead, that God is one in us, and that spirit is alive within us. We're temples of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom is alive now. All the gifts, all the privileges of, of adoption and sonship are ours today. Press your way into this kingdom. The violent take it by force. Now, violence is a good thing in that connotation, mind you. We're willing to press the spiritual warfare. And we're willing to stand up and fight as a Christian soldier, having the armor of God. That's the press. That's the violent taking it by force. And when we realize that the Godhead, God is one in us. The Father, the Creator, the sacrifice, the Lamb of God is in me. Has nothing to do with a physical shape of hands and head and, and a father and a son and some dove. God, he says explicitly not to look at the Godhead like that, like unto four-footed beasts and birds, and, and, and like unto corruptible man, father and son. He's telling us that he is a spirit, and we must look at things spiritually. They're spiritually understood. They're spiritually discerned. We walk in the spirit. You, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's how. That's why he says in all the Godhead scriptures, Colossians, Romans, uh, chapter 1, when he, when, it, when he talk about Godhead, all the way around it, it's talking about either obedience or disobedience. Either in the kingdom of heaven or you're not in the kingdom of heaven. You'll see it always right around the Godhead scriptures. And that's because we couldn't understand it for the longest time. That seemed out of place. What's that scripture doing in the middle of all that? Because we didn't understand Godhead. We're created in his image. How simple is that? Obviously, this is not the image. He created them male and female, them male and female. The image of God is, is that soul. And you, man, you look at the definition of soul, it's breath. Look at the definition of spirit, of, of Holy Spirit, breath. Let's talk about the breath of God. That's the image. And that Godhead image, we are either treating it right and having it within us, and, and know you not that you're temples of the Holy Spirit? You, you can't, what, what, do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Do we partake of the table of the Lord and the table of the devils? You know, that's, that's how we prove the Godhead alive in our lives is when we live holy, when we live righteous, when we live by the Spirit and abide in that Spirit within our lives. That's, that's the Godhead fulfilled. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. But we didn't get that understanding overnight. <laughs> I'm thankful to have it. So we look forward to hearing how things are going in the headquarters, Brother Bill. All right. All right. So tell us more about the Go Love One. Go Love One. Yep. All right, we are pressing on and pressing forward here, and we're very thankful 
Uh, yeah, Pastor, Pastor Scott, he's been sharing about go go love one and um, and um, so that's been a, a great great blessing. A lot is uh, uh, and uh, we wanted to you know see see uh, you know it, it basically it's it, it which uh, Pastor Jeff piggy piggybacked off it uh, last night also. Excellent job of piggybacking off it. That just we wanted we need to put a you know intercessory uh, legs and feet on our intercessory prayers and uh, press out, launch out into the deep, uh, push away from the shoreline and uh, and uh, and uh, make a friend and uh, and uh, be. Uh, in, in influential uh, spiritually and uh that's going to take you know it's going to take some spiritual effort and recently just like really you know very thankfully because just like you shan past the brand it just is really you know we have to uh to uh be uh you know n be uh, involved regularly with with the with the saints in uh in in good uh, good spiritual fellowship and breaking of bread and uh and uh, sharpening iron regularly to have an our sword sharpened and to keep it sharp so that really all those things go together and uh <clears throat> in this uh in this effort and um you have to uh be uh, be spiritually aware of uh, of the days of warfare and uh, and uh, have on the whole armor of God. Be living in living in God's armor and uh, and know this you know, king kingdom uh, about the kingdom of God and uh, and there's uh, the benefits. And uh, rewards, and be able to share those with others, and, uh, and be excited about that. So all these go into this message about uh, go love one, and um, and uh, so very thankful for that. And um, Pastor Jeff, he shared. I know one of my favorite scriptures in the. Uh, Couple of my favorite scriptures: Second Timothy four two, uh, preach the word, uh, be instant in season, out of season. Yeah, so that definitely that's definitely a lesson overcome in Romans twelve twenty one. Uh, overcome evil with evil with good. First Peter three fifteen. Uh, give an answer. Be ready always to give an answer to every man if the hope that lies within us. Uh, should have about that being weary and well doing, and um, again, Psalms he shared about daily. Psalm sixty eight nineteen also one of my favorite. You know, daily lotus with benefits, and uh, having the. Uh, Having the ministry of uh, reconciliation real in our lives. Hmm. So yeah, is it the harvest? As you know, the harvest is uh, harvest is there, and the labors are few, but the harvest is uh, plentiful. So let us go out there and uh, and uh, win a soul for Jesus. Amen to that. How, how are things on the health front? Uh, let's see. Let's see. There any just yeah, updates? We we got. Of course, we got some uh, several. Um, Prayer requests that came in. Um, 
everyone, the, the pastors of all, they feel they've been doing well, very thankful everyone's doing well here. And uh, we have to, quite a few requests, prayer requests that have come in. And um, for um, uh, pass for William, for Pastor uh, Jeff Lynch, for William Lynch, who was here not that that we here that not that long ago for the loss of his foster mom, and uh, prayers for them. And also for some that we, of course, we know in, in the ministry, that we know, knew in the ministry, praying for them. We got one for Jeff Wiedenhoff for his uh, loss of his uncle. And uh, we had one for, for um, Bob Vincent, whose uh, mom who's visited and spent, I mean, spent time here for many years. Uh, Miss Lola Stowe passed away. And... Uh, and um, Mike Jackson's dad passed away. I think it would believe it was. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of prayers go out for for the uh, for those that have lost family members. And of course, we also know that um, that, that I know Brother Todd sent out a message just this evening that. Uh, Carlos Vargas' mom is back in, in in ICU at the hospital where she had her surgeries. So that's a, that's another one. So there's a lot of prayer requests going around in, through the uh, through the uh, uh, saints, and uh, and we're bringing those uh, prayers before the throne of God. Amen. Bold before the throne of God. Amen. For comfort. I'd like to make sure, if we can, before we retire tonight, that we we reach out to Brother Carlos, our our fellow fellowshipper here. Um, send him a text, tell him you're thinking of him, and pray for him. Don't just say it, you know. Pray for him, and um, I'm sure he'd appreciate that. It's uh, coming up on ten o'clock in his time zone, right, Matt? I guess. So. Yeah, eight minutes away. So I know he's with his uh, other family members. I think his sister and and, and brother. Um, they went to another city. What was the city? Um, let me pull up the text Carlos gave me here just not long ago. I want to say Sioux Falls. Sounds familiar. Uh, I'm on the wrong end. Here we go. She had a major surgery. Now, now they're talking about a possibility of uh, something else uh, inside there. Um, what do you say? Uh, they're in Rapid City. Rapid City. I know they were treating her for chemo, but they're also, I think it was kidney issues. Uh, yeah, it says in the email a, um, a kidney infection. Right. So I, I don't know if they're having conflicting doctor reports or or two different things going on. So I um, any kind of confusion like that in a seriousness uh, to this nature really adds a lot of uh, anxiety for the family to go through. And, and um, I'm sure she's not feeling all that great about it either. So we'll send them some some. Uh, warm prayers that way because i know god hears i know i know people when we ask god to move on somebody he does he does yep. brother alex i'm gonna i'm gonna come to you next brother and i'm gonna ask for the great lakes i know and uh i know you're ready because you always are you're a good brother <laughs> <laughs> thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to mute my microphone. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, my uh, personal life, just can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, my, my, my personal life uh, is this college class that's kind of got busy, but. Uh, just very thankful for God, uh, His mercies, His goodness. Uh, 
just uh, keeping me keeping me alive and uh, aware what I need to do and, and focus in ministry and uh, we had a let's see pull up my notes let's see we had a wonderful service uh, God bless us with uh, seven sailors out uh, for the service we, sp we spoke about uh, testimonies uh, many left but we know where we came from and what God did for us. Uh, God is calling us to a high calling. Uh, thank God for godly women. Uh, honor to them who spread the gospel. Let's see, and then we had a, a sermon by Pastor Parrish Lee. Uh, love that God has for us. And uh, he started, uh, his opening scripture is 1 John 4.16. And from there we learn that we have known and believe that the love that God has for us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. So the key, the key words that he got from that scripture is that we have known and believed. And uh, he spoke about how uh, Apostle, uh, Apostle John, who wrote this, he wrote a gospel uh, of, of Jesus Christ 50 years prior, I would say roughly. Um, so, and even we, we, we see that people disputed who God was. It's always, always controversial who God is and this and that. But you know, we know from the scriptures and that's clear to us. That's how he uh, added 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the world, and received up in glory. Um, so people still wonder who Jesus is. Uh, and back then, they didn't have no radio, they didn't have technology. But what they had was the linen, the lean on Jesus' words. Uh, and then he added uh, 1 John chapter, uh, 1 John 4, 1. Believe not every spirit, but try them, okay? And the uh, word of God is precious, and it tells us how it is. It tells us. Uh, and then 1 John 4, 4 to, 4 to 8 talking about greatest he that is in you than in the world. He spoke about our identity that we have in Christ, uh, what we have in Christ. Uh, and then he spoke about uh, God is love, and we need to love others. And uh, know and receive and accept him and his truth. So know God and receive and accept what we have in here. Let's see. Okay. So he spoke about how God is blessing us daily. Uh, so we need to stay faithful to his word. Uh, 1 John 4.10, He sent His Son to be atonement for our sins. Um, we start with God's love. Uh, he knows us from the mother's womb. And He shared the scripture, Jeremiah 1.5. Uh, our strength is in the Lord. God ordained Jeremiah. Uh, we love God because He feels loved us. Every time we get a new chance, it's from God. And, and he put the scripture, Psalms 22, 9. God has given us uh, the hope. Uh, uh, Romans 15, 13, God is God of hope. Uh, so, so we can be close to God. It's about relationship. So, uh, so why is he giving us the hope? Is because God wants us have a, a closer relationship. 
uh, and he's looking for that uh, reciprocal relationship, uh, love. Uh, Ezekiel 16, 1 to 15, God is looking for us, Israel separated from God, and uh, he spoke about the babies, how important in the first four months um, to have that uh, a baby love and affection to it, spend time with the baby, and, uh, and after, but God, okay. So if babies in the in the first four months don't get that attention, then they have a social problems. Uh, God, but also good nutrition is, is important for the rest of the lives. Um, so God knows what we need spiritually. We need Him to feed us, and hold us, and nurture us. And then He spoke about how He. Sometimes his desires for to spend time more with God, and uh, <clears throat> kind of reminds me of uh, King David, how he was seeking God's love and attention, seeking God's presence. Okay, God is looking for reciprocal love. Okay, and that's why we come on Sundays and and throughout the week. And spend time with God for that reciprocal love. Remember where we came from, what we and what God provided to us. Show compassion to people. And then he shared Psalms 22 3. God inhabits our praises. John 4 23 to 24. But the hour comes and, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and the truth. God is a spirit. Uh, Mark 12, 30, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh, submission. He gave us the largest hog on the cross. Uh, John 10, 14 to 15, God knows his sheep. Then uh, 1 John 3, 1, love of God is greatest. What manner of love God has for us. So, and then he spoke about uh, different types of life, loves out there, love, um, and then, and then he finished with the scripture that he began. First uh, John four sixteen, we know and believe. So, uh, so that was a great, great time. Um, then we uh, we have brother Jesse Gully. He uh, he still has the tubes. In him for drainage, he just went through uh, surgery, uh, cancer removal surgery, and he's a uh, prostate. Uh, also, uh, one of his sisters, uh, 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 sister uh, Lena, she's going to a surgery tomorrow for her shoulder. She's the daughter of uh, uh, sister Hardy, if you remember. Her. Um, so. We had a wonderful time for Super Bowl. Uh, we went to have a military, but nobody wanted to come, unfortunately. So we had a great fellowship. Uh, and we spent time with other sister of uh, a daughter of, of uh, Sister Hardy. Her name is Karine. Uh, she came for the uh, Super Bowl party. It was a Pastor Giblu's place. And we had Eugene Shackleford and his wife, uh, Philip Russell, Jose and Nazira, uh, uh, Galvez. Uh, that was just a great time, just bonding time, you know. So, so, so other than that, uh, I definitely need a prayer for my college and and understanding, and you know, so appreciate it. And I will forward the notes from Sunday, so uh, you all have it. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Brother Dave DeLuna, do you got anything for us? I know you're on mute. 
Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you for um, all those scriptures and all those uh, sharing everything. It's such a blessing. Um, um, I was sharing with the pastor before how um, we were fellowshipping with the um, um, military uh, down here. And past Sunday, a couple of Marines also came out. Um, to fellowship with us in the service. So um, we're keeping prayer for um, about four of them that, um, you know, seeking to be saved and get baptized. So we lift them up in Jesus' name, but uh, we've been having some good studies on baptism and, and um, um, practicing good Christian habits and getting rid of our old uh, worldly habits. Um, and that's uh, uh, this is one of the scriptures was Psalms 26 to examine yourself to so really be in the faith. Um, and Philippians 4 5 through 8, Hebrews 12 1 through 3. That'd be a great cloud of witness. Uh, Luke 9.23, take up your cross daily. Uh, Psalms 4, 5, sacrifices of righteousness. And then um, it talked about uh, that toward the end, about the name of Jesus, that... Um, uh, whatsoever you ask in Jesus' name, that he'll give it to you. And that if you um, <clears throat> really want to change your habits and, and your ways, that God will, will bless you in that area. So uh, that's what I'm uh, going here in San Diego. So uh, thank you, brothers, for everything. And uh, health-wise, uh, I, I was going through some kidney issues, but I thank God that I've been through a bunch of tests and blood blood work and, and ultrasounds and um, you gave me a good bill of health, so I praise God for that. Mm. And um, mm. my brother Chuck's still doing good with his, uh, his uh, kidney situation as well, so we praise Jesus in that area, but we will be lifting up all the brothers and I'm going to share what you guys shared with me with Brother uh, Chuck to pray pray more diligently for those um, that are ill. And uh, as far as Carlos' uh, mom, uh, I, I actually met her before. I had the, the blessed opportunity to, uh, to meet Dari, so I'll definitely be communicating with him on that. Amen. Well, thank you, brothers. Amen. So how are things with your fiance? Bless, bless. Um, we're uh, well, he perked right him. up, didn't he? Boom, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we're blessed. Um, she was, she was actually sharing with me today how Angelina got hit in the head with a volleyball because she's in their volleyball uh, um, um, I guess it's a volleyball um, social thing. Where they compete all over the United States. The couple of weeks they're going up to Vegas and having a tournament. But uh, yesterday she got hit in the head real bad and got knocked on the floor. You and, get a concussion uh, took, with it. Yeah, she she took her to the doctor today. But um, what really blessed my heart was that um, um, there was a lady there and, and Virgie started telling her and ministering to her as a uh, she, you know, she was there because she had, they went to the emergency room and she was there because um, um, the lady had gotten a flu shot and gotten sick off it. So she was there and, and she was there with Angelina checking her, her head. But she was able to uh, tell her, um, she said uh, she was an elderly lady. Um, she's married to um, a retired Air Force guy. And uh, he's, he's uh, ill and um, her could hardly walk, so Virgie started ministering to her, 
and telling her about, you know, Jesus was God and that she needed to be saved. And the lady asked Virgie if she was Mormon. And uh, Virgie goes, I don't even know what a Mormon is. But uh, she sh was sharing with her how she got baptized. And so I, I was I was blessed when I heard that. And uh, and I told Virgie, well, maybe you'll continue to see her and continue to minister to her to be saved. So things are going good on that side. And I'm hoping her, her to get back down here and then fellowship with the brothers and, you know, fellowship with the fellowship in San Diego. But it's been a hectic, hectic with her tournaments. But she's doing good. Thank I thank God for that. Amen. Brother Matt, you want to share with us on anything? I know that uh, we were going to talk about some things. Um, well, definitely thankful um, <clears throat> that I found a brother in Christ here that I can have fellowship with. Um, and, you know, and the reality, of course, is, is, is um even though he's part of another ministry he's still a brother in christ because he does believe the truth yep. and, he, and he obeys the truth uh so i'm thankful for that um still uh still uh looking for work i had uh two emails today responses um to some applications i sent out one from the university of new mexico they said they decided to go with somebody else <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the other one was from uh, SAIC, and they said that they were they were not going to go forward with the recruiting process um, on the position that I expressed an interest. So that they're not even pursuing that particular role right now. So, mm. like, okay, well, um, definitely, I want I want God to close the doors that need to be closed, open the doors that need to be opened. Amen. Uh, Amen to that. Next week, um, if if you if you know anybody in your area um, that is looking for work, next, let's see, the thirteenth, I think. Let me look at my calendar real quick. Yeah, next Wednesday, the thirteenth. Lowe's is doing a a nationwide hiring event. Um, they're hiring. Um, uh, full and part-time, seasonal. They're they're hiring for the spring. So if you know anybody that's looking for work, uh, that may be something to to check out. Uh, I, I plan on going to uh, if they have a um, if they have a management position or something that that's suitable. Then I know some of those stores will do management training uh, training programs. So you don't necessarily have to have a lot of experience. Uh, because they want you, they want to train you the way they want you to work. Uh, so um, I'm going to check that out, and see how that goes. The right way, the wrong way, and the Lowe's way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Navy way. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Navy way and the wrong way. Yes. <laughs> and Walmart, and Walmart to have a thing called my best way. <laughs> I just want everybody on on my best way. <laughs> uh, on, well, it's called one best way, where they want everybody on one best way. And now it's some, but I have my best way. <laughs> <laughs> my way is best. <laughs> I, 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 it's a joke. I told somebody, it's like, well, I could become a greeter at Walmart. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> well, it, it's actually. Walmart. It's actually not that easy. You have to watch out for screws. No, yeah, I, I would. <laughs> Asset management. <laughs> yep. All right, brother. Anybody got anything else before we sign out? Uh.